Hey there, I'm excited to announce this to you today. This is what you've been waiting for in your spiritual quest. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time, and I'm finally ready to announce it that it's ready to go. It's the Grief to Growth Community Circle. Now, this is a sanctuary where like-minded souls are united in their journey through grief and towards personal transformation. It's more than just a place. It's a beginning. It's a commitment to growth and understanding. Here you're finding not just a community, but you're entering a circle of trust and depth. You're going to engage with interactive coursework. You'll dive into exclusive podcast episodes and partake in discussions that illuminate the path from mourning to empowerment. This is a realm where every question is honored and every individual's journey is validated. To be part of this exclusive circle, visit us at grieftogrowth.com slash community or look for the chat icon at the bottom of every page on the main website. Remember that entry is a privilege because I want to ensure that every member is as dedicated and genuine as you are. You must apply to join, but the journey within is worth every step. So go ahead and join us today. Check it out, grieftogrowth.com slash community, and I look forward to seeing you there. Hi there. Welcome to Grief to Growth Podcast. Your host is Brian Smith, spiritual seeker, best-selling author, grief survivor, and life coach. Brian believes that the worst tragedies of life provide the greatest opportunity for growth. Brian says he was planted, not buried, and he is here to help you grow where you've been planted by the difficulties in life. In each episode, Brian and his guests will share what has helped them to survive and thrive. It is his sincere hope this episode helps you today. Hey there. I wanted to answer a question that I got from one of my listeners slash viewers. So I appreciate you guys interacting with the last video I did with the questions, and I'll keep these going as long as you're interested in it. And this is a, you guys don't ask easy questions. This is a question though that's very common that comes up, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to frame the question, then I'm going to think maybe expand it a little bit. So the question is, when we cross over, when, we, when our bodies stop functioning, when we die, to put it simply, do we have a choice of coming back? Uh, we have heard reports of people who have had near-death experiences that have been given choices uh, or been given a choice to come back, and they've chosen to come back. We've also, though, frankly, been told of people who have been given a choice to come back or not given a choice and were just sent back. So the question, this was prompted by the fact that this person's loved one, their, their son, passed in a similar way to my daughter. He was a young man. Sudden, unexplained death. My daughter was young. She was 15. Sudden, unexplained death. And so when we hear someone who's had a near-death experience and been given the choice to come back, we think, well, this person was so young and vibrant and loved life so much. Why weren't they given a choice to come back? Because I know they would have chosen to come back. So the thing is, frankly, we don't know that they would have chosen to come back. We have heard people, even people who were mothers that had young children that were here, that were given a choice or not given a choice, but were told, you know, that they had to come back and they decided they wanted to stay because it was so great there and they knew everything was here was going to be okay. So we don't really know what we would choose or what our loved one would choose if they had been given the choice. And frankly, we can't know if everyone gets a choice because as I said, we know that some people don't get a choice uh, and they're sent back without having a choice. We don't know if people cross over and don't have a choice and are required to stay. Uh, and so one reason why that might be required to stay is if their body can't sustain life. Um, so if your body can't sustain life, then of course you wouldn't be able to come back. So I want to take this question of whether this person may given a choice. And I want to expand it out a little bit to do we choose when we die? Because this, I think, is is the broader question: um, do we do we choose when we die? And if and so, let's go through this. So, what I, I always like to start off with is what do we know? So, we're going to start off with what do we know for sure? Well, we know for sure that a hundred percent of the people that are born will die. Uh, there there are no exceptions. If you're born, you die. You're going to die. That is the plan. The questions are where, or when, and how. Those are the two two things that are are variables. But birth comes with a 100% chance of death. The number one cause of death is birth. So we, we know that. And, you know, so we sometimes get upset about the timing of things. We get upset about um, the way things happen. But we know that death is, is inevitable. So the thing is, do we choose when we die? And so let's look at what the let's look at what the options are. Let's look at the evidence for each of those. So one option would be that 
it's random. The universe is just a random place. Um, things happen and we come in and we die whenever whenever we die. Um, and we can look at the evidence for that and, and someone can make a case. Yeah, it seems to be pretty random. Uh, another option we might look at is that God determines it. So God determines when we're when we die. And I know people that believe this. And for some people, this causes them great anger because God has chosen to take a loved one earlier than we thought they should have. For some people, this brings them great comfort that God in his infinite wisdom decides when it's a right time for us to go. And people accept that and, and it's okay with them. Um, that one doesn't really work for me, but if it works for you, then fine. I was visiting with someone just a couple of days ago uh, that had a loved one that passed suddenly very young. And they were comforted by the fact that they believe in God's divine timing and that God determined that. So it could be random. It could be God. It could be that we choose uh, either alone or in cooperation with a team of uh, on the other side. So this is an interesting thing because we can clearly see as the human part of us, the human side of us, that we don't choose. We see people die in accidents. We see people fighting to live and we see them dying anyway. So we know the evidence doesn't show that the human part of us chooses when we die, but there is the possibility that we choose as our higher self, as our soul, if you want to call it that, as our oversoul. Um, and it's a possibility that we choose when we're in spirit, when we're going to die and we plan that out. So these are the options that it's, it's random, that it's chosen by God, that we choose. Uh, it could be predetermined. It could be free will. So these are the options. So what, what is the evidence for each of these scenarios? And so the evidence for random, as I already stated, is pretty much there. You can make the case that it's random. It certainly looks random from an outside perspective. Um, the evidence that God chooses, you know, we, I, there's no way to really know that. That is a, that is a belief. And uh, you could say that maybe based on scripture, somebody might say that God knows the the number of hairs in our head in the days of our lives. So that could that you could call that evidence or something that might lead us in that direction. Um, when it comes to whether we choose or not, I believe there's a great deal of evidence for this, and this is what I I believe. We've had people that have had. Uh, between life regressions, where they'll go back to when they're in life between life, and they'll remember planning their life out and how things were supposed to go. Uh, we've had, you know, mediums tell us or people coming through mediums telling us that it was determined when they were ago that there was nothing that could be done about it. Uh, we've had people have had near death experiences that have said everything is just as it should be. And that we we are it's determined when we're going to go. Uh, I remember Dr. Mary Neal, when she had her near-death experience, when she was in spirit, she was told that her son would die at a very early age. I believe it was around 18. And it was about 10 years from when she had this experience. And no, in spite of whatever she did or whatever she believed or whatever, it did come to pass that her son did, did pass at that time. Uh, I happen to know someone who is an intuitive, a medium, who says that she knows when people are going to transition, uh, including herself and her loved ones. Um, and so in that case, uh, at least what her, she's reported to me, there's really no choice. Um, now there's some people that have said that we have multiple exit points, that there are multiple points in our life where we might have we might choose to go, but we can't apparently go past that last exit point. So that's that's predetermined. So the thing is, whichever these things we choose to believe, we can find some amount of evidence for it. I think the preponderance of the evidence points to the fact that somehow that we choose either when we're in spirit before we come here or as our higher self, how long we're going to be here. And I think we choose it that way. And it may not it may not fit in with what our human point of view is. You, may, you might say, well, who would choose to pass at, at 15, for example, who would choose to pass as as an infant? Um, and in some cases, even our, our people have had children that pass in their 30s or 40s and their, their life was too short. And who would choose that? So as our human self, we probably wouldn't choose that. But as our higher self and seeing the bigger picture, we might choose that for the benefit of our soul for this incarnation and or for the benefit of our loved ones. Another thing I want to say while I'm talking about this is I think it's very important is especially with young people, we view their, their transition as a tragedy, that their life was cut short, that they weren't able to enjoy their life and that they should be here and enjoying all the great things about life. Well, there's a couple of things that's, that's actually kind of 
wrong with that point of view. And I want to point out what those are. First of all, their lives were not cut short. They, we, when we transition, continue to live. In fact, we live more abundantly, a, a better life. So when we think about our loved ones and we think about what they're quote missing, uh, keep in mind that they're not really missing anything that they have, they have moved on. They have graduated, I would call it uh, to a, to a higher level. The other thing is that kind of comes from the point of view that this one life is all there is, where it's it's a one and done point of view. So if you're going to come to this earth, you would think you want to stay here as long as possible to get the most out of it as possible, um, because you only have one shot. Now, again, you you might choose, you might believe that. I believe there's enough evidence to show that we come to this earth over and over and over again, and that it's not just one shot. So in any one life, if that life, ha life happens to be short or tragic or full of pain or whatever, our souls don't view that as a loss because it's just one experience out of many. So those are my views on whether we choose um, when we die, uh, who chooses when we die, and we can examine those and you can examine those and determine, first of all, which one makes the most sense to you, which one has the most evidence for, for the it. The other thing is try each one on because we can't, frankly, really know this for a fact while we're here. So try it on. What makes you feel comfortable? What brings you peace? What brings you joy? And if even any of them don't bring you peace and don't, don't bring you joy, then you don't have to choose to believe that there are other options you can choose that do have evidence. I'm not just saying choose which one feels best to you or makes you feel the best. I don't think it's all about wishful thinking. For me, I feel more empowered by knowing that there's a plan that I participated in the plan, not that just God imposed this on me and God put me here and said, this is what you're going to do. But it's a cooperative thing. It's we're we are co-creators in our lives. And even though things happen in my life that human Brian, my ego might not like, I choose to trust that the things that happen for me are for my own best good and for the best good of everybody and everything in the universe, in spite of how it might look right now. And that's what brings me peace. And that is what I've found, frankly, a lot of evidence for. So those are my thoughts. Again, I like to hear what your thoughts are. What am I saying that might be right? What am I saying that might be wrong? And any other questions you have, just let me know. So have a great day and I'll see you soon. Thanks for listening to Grief to Growth. Brian hopes that you find this episode helpful and will come back for future episodes. Brian's best-selling book, Grief to Growth, Planted Not Buried, is a great resource for anyone who is coping with grief or knows someone who is. If you enjoy the podcast and would like to support it, there are three things you can do to help. The first is to share the podcast with someone that you think it will help. The second is to go to iTunes, rate, and review the episode. The third way you can support the podcast is by becoming a patron. Head over to www.patreon.com slash grief to growth. That's patreo ncom slash grief, the number two, growth, and sign up to make a small monthly donation. Patrons get access to exclusive bonus content and knowledge that you are helping to spread the message of grief to growth. For more about Brian and Grief to Growth, visit www.grief2growth.com. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed this latest episode of the podcast, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. What questions came up for you? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? I invite you to visit us at grieftogrowth.circle.so. That's grief, the number two, growth.circle.so to continue the conversation with me and with other listeners. It's a space to sound off, to share reactions, and to go deeper into the topics from the show. I look forward to chatting more, and I hope to see you there.